Hey, hi. My name is Kevin. I have a little sister, Reeve. And the thing is, our mum is hiding her gender from our dad. It's awful, isn't it? She even has a name, Reeve. You can't tell if it's a boy or a girl. My mum made it up. Anyway, I'll tell you all the details and you'll understand why my mother did it and what happened afterwards. My father is a military man. He has a strict temper and he is very reserved and likes to keep everything under control. When my mother was pregnant with me, my father immediately gave me a name. And just so you understand, he did not consider a name for a girl. He loved to tell his ancestral story that a long time ago, his great, 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 great grandfather had an affair with a very beautiful woman. Everyone sought her out, so she was charmed by her unique beauty. And my grandfather was lucky. He did it. They fell in love with each other. There was a passion and love and anger and jealousy. And then it so happened that during the war period, my grandfather was taken to the front. There was no communication. He was away from home for several long years. When he came back alive, he didn't find his girlfriend. At first he was upset, but then he decided not to get lost and married a good girl. My great, great, great grandmother and so on. They lived well, had children, worked, and everything seemed to work out. And then BAM! My grandmother opened the door of their house and a woman was standing on the threshold. She had a bandage on her face. Grandma got scared, and when Grandpa came out, he recognized her right away. Well, there was drama and tears. Grandfather said that he could not leave the family because he loved his wife. His first love got angry. It turned out that she followed him to the front. She was taken prisoner because of her beauty, and she went through terrible torment. And all these years, she was not let out. And there she lost an eye when she insulted a commander-in-chief. Her life was no longer the same. She immediately cursed my grandmother. She said there would be no heirs, not one, and that only girls would be born. And then she disappeared without a trace. My grandfather panicked because he and my grandmother were expecting a child, but they didn't know what sex it would be. Before that, they already had two girls, and Grandpa wanted a son. He and his grandmother did everything possible. They went to fortune tellers, healers, and one day, they even went to a witch. She conjured up that so-and-so would only have sons now. Maybe people of that time were more superstitious. But then my grandfather actually had a boy, and then his children all had boys, and so on from generation to generation. This story passed from mouth to mouth, and since my father followed in the footsteps of his relatives and also became a military man, he was confident in his genetics. Fortunately, my mother gave birth to me. My father was happy and proud. And then, a few years passed and my mother got pregnant again. Only my father went abroad for work for a few months. The plan was for him to come back a couple of months after the birth. My mum had been going to hospitals for checkups the whole time, and when she found out that they were having a girl, my mum cried. This was in front of me. Mum, don't worry, it's Daddy's little girl. He will love her anyway. No, son, you don't understand. Your father will think all sorts of things, but he will not admit that this is his child. It's all because of this idiotic legend. I don't believe it. Neither do I, but your father does, and I can't imagine what he'll say when he finds out the truth. Let's not tell him then. It doesn't matter. Let him go away first, and when you give birth, we'll see. Maybe he'll see his daughter and be happy. Who knows? Mum was still upset, but agreed that we shouldn't talk now, just before she left. Dad left. Mum gave birth two months later. I broke the news to him. Yay, yay, yay. I'm so happy. How is my other son? How's Mum? Um, all's good, Dad. The baby is healthy, thank you. How are you? Great, son. Say hello to Roosevelt. I'll be there soon. Roosevelt? Yeah, that's what I called him. Hi, Mum. Bye. I went into mum and she asked what we were talking about. I retold it like it was, and mum closed her eyes. Come on, mum. Roosevelt? And what am I going to call her? Mm, let's call her Reeve. Reeve? Yeah, why not? Let's make it something like Roosevelt. Say I asked for it and you couldn't refuse. I'll take the fire. Son, you're the best I've got. Reeve grew up, sometimes crying, but overall she was a quiet baby. When mum showed her on video, Dad didn't have a clue, because you can't tell what little ones look like, much less the gender. But as far as I was concerned, the babysitter was just the thing. She was the prettiest girl I had ever seen. I willingly helped my mother, bathed her, sometimes fed her formula, played with her, and put her to sleep. Mum kept saying that she had a child from God. I took that as a compliment. Well, 
Then Reeve got even bigger. My dad was on a business trip. It was good for us. We kept cutting Reeve's hair short to show my dad. But then one day he did ask a question. I don't know what he looks like. Who does he look like? He looks just like Kevin, doesn't he? Reeve looks weird. What do you mean? His features are more feminine or something. No, he's not. Or so I thought. The reception on the video was bad. Ah, maybe. After they talked, my mum took a sedative, but it didn't help. She started crying and saying things. Mum, come on. I lied. Now your father's going to be doubly angry. But he's the one that made you lie. He won't admit that for the world. But I'm not afraid for me. I'm afraid for her. What will happen? I asked him once when I was pregnant with Reeve what would happen if we had a girl. And your father said he didn't even want to think about it. I knew my father, and I also knew what he could do when he was angry. So I suggested to my mum that the day he came to visit my parents. Sooner or later, son, he won't do anything to you there. And as a last resort, I'll stay there with Reeve. It was the only thing we could think of, and so we did. My father called the date of arrival, and that same day we left for my grandparents' house. They, by the way, didn't know what gender the baby was either. We just didn't tell anyone. They were happy to meet us, and by the evening, the father called. He asked where we were, and mum lied that we had gone to her sister's on urgent business like we'd be there soon. Grandma and grandpa supported my idea, and grandpa also said that if anything happened, he would call the police right away. Mum calmed down and went to bathe Reeve, and we sat down to drink tea. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Grandma opened it, and I saw my father. My jaw dropped. Dad, hi, how are you? Where's my wife? She's in the bathroom bathing my sister. Reeve's bathing. Don't go in there yet. I'll call her. I'll get her. Don't you dare go in there. You were told to wait. My wife's cheating on me. That shows that you intimidated her. How can your own father intimidate a family like that? She said she went down to her sister's. But you're here. What are you hiding from me? Nothing, Dad. Calm down. But he wasn't listening anymore. Dad went to the bathroom, opened the door, and saw the child bathing in the tub. Mum was confused, didn't know what to do. And Daddy saw the baby and pulled him out of the tub. Oh my God, my baby! Hi, it's Daddy! And then his eyes went down and... What? It's... It's what? Mum was in tears. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you right away. I was scared. I didn't know how to tell you that we had a daughter. I understand if you give up on us. Mum was flooded with tears and we froze in anticipation. Dad took a towel, wrapped Reeve, held her closely and sat on the floor next to Mum. I'm sorry, honey. What? I'm sorry that I'm too bigoted about my lineage. Who knows, maybe it's all made up. I have a daughter and I'm happy, especially since we already have a son. At that moment, Reeve stretched out her arms, yawned sweetly and fell asleep right on his chest. That was the first time we all saw a tear roll down my father's cheek. So we didn't make a big fuss. Everything went well. We got home and the next morning my dad woke up bright and early and we found him in the guest room. Turns out he had decided to convert it for Reeve's room. But why? She's just a baby. Well, not yet. But when she gets older, she won't be sleeping in her brother's room. She'll have her own little girl's room. I'm going to make it pink, like a real princess. Hello everyone, my name is Lexi. This may seem strange to you, but I have two personalities. This is me, the real me, and Grandpa Chu, who is Chinese, by the way. Can I tell you how I realized there were two people in my body? Look further. To begin with, I was born a normal child. I have a dad, a mom, and a little brother, Jude. When I was little, I thought that everything was fine with me, that there was no second me. My mother noticed the first signs of duality when I was 12 years old. As she said, I was going to school. Everything was as usual. I woke up, went to wash my face, brushed my teeth, and went down for breakfast. My mother always baked pancakes for me in the morning. I ate them with honey and drank warm milk. But that morning, I suddenly picked up a newspaper, poured myself a cup of coffee, sat down at the table and started reading the news. I'd never read the news, though. My mother was horrified, came up to me and asked what I was doing. And I looked at her and said, Sarah, that's her name, pour me another cup of coffee and find my glasses, otherwise I can't see anything. My mother thought I was joking. 
She said that now I will miss the bus and then I will be punished for a week. They will turn off the internet, but I didn't react. She called my name ten times and then touched my shoulder. I looked up and asked her what she wanted. My mother scolded me for ignoring her, and I said to her, Daughter, calm down. I can't see well, but I can still hear normally. Don't shout like that. My mother was busy and punished me. Then the school bus arrived, she started to rush me, and I fell asleep at the table. Mom woke me up in a minute. I seemed to wake up, shouted, Mom, why did you wake me up so late? I didn't even eat a pancake. And then I grabbed a pancake, drank the milk, and ran away. When I got home, my mother didn't talk to me about it. A week later, it happened again. Only this time, it's in history class at school. I remember walking into class, sitting next to my friend Elizabeth, and that was it. I felt like I'd passed out. First, I got a tingling sensation in the back of my head, then my palms started sweating, and that's it. When I came to, I was sitting in the principal's office with my mother by my side. They scolded me for having a war of words with a teacher and making him hysterical. I began to make excuses, like I didn't do anything. But then we were shown a video from the class. I saw it with my own eyes and heard it when I suddenly started arguing with the historian. He told us about his grandfather, who fought in the war, and then somehow smoothly moved off the topic and talked about the Sino-Japanese War. Then another person woke up in me and started saying that the teacher was wrong. I called him incompetent, an ignoramus, and said that I was ashamed of such a teacher. And then I added a couple of sentences in Chinese and left the class. My mother looked at me as my eyes widened from surprise. My mother asked me how I knew Chinese, and I didn't know how. I had a serious conversation waiting for me when I got home. My mother remembered the picture at breakfast and began to think aloud. She thought that I might be too overworked for school and allowed me to go on vacation with my father in another city. I was just given two weeks off from school. My dad made a whole relaxation program for me. There was an amusement park and watching cartoons until late in the evening. Ice cream, shopping, and, as my father said, the day before we left, when we packed our bags, I suddenly felt a tingling sensation in the back of my head again, then closed the suitcase and went out with it to the lobby. My dad and I were staying in a hotel. Dad started asking me where I was going, and I would turn to him and say something in Chinese. I walked like a grandmother, bent over, holding my back, taking someone's umbrella and leaning on it, using it as a walking stick and dragging the suitcase. When I got to the front desk, there was an employee standing there. He was Chinese and we had a good conversation. Despite the surprise of the man, he still played along with me. It turns out I was looking for a nursing home to visit my beloved there. When the employee asked me my name, I answered Grandpa Chu. The guy bowed politely, pointed to my father, and said that he would show me out. This was my driver to calm me down. He translated our entire conversation to my father then gave me coffee, which I demanded, and I sat down on the sofa and fell asleep there. Dad was in shock, but the employee approached him and advised him to consult a psychologist. He said that he had a grandmother who had a split personality, so he was used to this kind of thing. With this thought in mind, I was brought to my hometown, and the first thing I did was to see a psychologist. I took a lot of tests there and answered a lot of questions. And then, a specialist, with the permission of my parents, put me into a state of hypnosis and put me to sleep. They started to wake Grandpa Chu and hired an interpreter in advance. My grandfather woke up and told me all about himself. He was harmless, very kind and polite. He was always rushing to the nursing home to see his beloved, to give her favorite peonies. When asked if he knew a girl named Lexi, he said he did. She is my granddaughter. I love her very much, he said. When I woke up, my mom and dad's faces were ambiguous. I realized that something was happening and it couldn't be fixed. I was right. The psychologist told me in detail about my second personality. She said it might have been passed down to me. It turns out that my father's second cousin had a mild form of schizophrenia, and I have a split personality. The doctor advised me to live with him in peace and harmony, said that he would not harm me in any way. 
only I need to feel when he wants to wake up in me and signal this to my parents. I was also told that they will try to cure it, but for now, I will have to learn to live with it and somehow control its appearance. To do this, I need to negotiate with him myself. From that moment on, I regularly visited a psychologist, and we tried to communicate with my grandfather during hypnosis. It is very pliable, which makes the process much easier, as the doctor said. I found out that my grandfather had already visited several countries. In Paris, he found his first love and they secretly married, as their parents were against mixed marriage. Grandpa loves coffee and is always looking for peonies for his beloved Grace. He is sure that she lives in a nursing home and he wants to see her. Grandpa Chu thinks I'm his granddaughter on her side, which is why he treats me so well. When you ask him about his childhood, he says that he is so old, he doesn't remember anything. My parents decided to keep this fact a secret, so they arranged for my distance learning, isolated me, and then took me to another state altogether. At the doctor's insistence, we are going to China. Who knows, maybe this will somehow help separate Grandpa Chu and me. We're leaving soon. I am very interested in seeing another country. I hope that the trip will be useful. In the meantime, man, I'm starting to get those tingles again.